Hey guys, welcome again. Today I am here with a very special guest. So uh, great that you're joining us for this spontaneous Starpoint Gemini Warlord stream. I am here today with Mario Mihokovic. I hope that I'm pronouncing it right, but uh, I guess yes, it's okay. Yes, so he's uh, here all the way from Croatia in the Netherlands. So tell me, Mario, why are you here exactly? Well, I I'm on a couple of free days, but uh, I guess I'll be working after all uh, a ah, bit. So uh, looks like it now. <laughs> I had to see you guys. I was uh, passing by, so it wouldn't be right not to see our colleagues. And yeah, it's great. It's lovely. You're actually our first guest in the new studio, so uh, that's one uh, one first. <laughs> so yeah, we've prepared some fun questions for you because it's not uh, every time that we have such a great guest here in the studio and you're the CEO of LGM. So um, we would love to ask you some cool questions. So the first one is that uh, it's already five years ago that the first Starpoint Gemini game released. Um, probably a lot have changed over time. Uh, yes. What is the biggest change for you personally? Personally, uh, I'm older and I have more <laughs> more greys on my head. <laughs> That's the biggest uh, the biggest difference. Uh, well, uh, a lot of changed. Uh, I mean, in in our office, in uh, in the, uh, with the people with the, that we work with, uh, pretty much nothing is the same. The 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 number of people, the what what they can do, what they want to do, what they're trying to achieve, the the offices, the pretty much everything. Uh, I was actually quite surprised how fast it uh, things move. So it's it, it's been an amazing ride, and I hope it's. Uh, far from over we got a lot of things to do more yeah looks like it yeah so um what does your day kind of look like being a ceo of lgm well my day looks like uh, uh also quite a bit uh, different than i thought so uh, <laughs> actually there's a, there's a lot more uh a lot more uh, official work uh, it's 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 a uh, quite different to handle uh, uh band of a uh, small number of friends that you work with and a uh, larger uh, development studio so it, it makes for some difference but uh, it, it's it's been fun i've been learning a lot of new things i'm doing also a lot of things that i never wanted to do <laughs> I, I gotta be uh, honest with that yeah but there's always time to to actually work on the the game itself and uh, to embark on some creative work but it it's uh it's definitely a smaller amount of time uh, than it was before because there are a lot of other things that someone has to do and somehow they came up on my head so <laughs> but it's okay it's been interesting yeah yeah so have you got some funny office anecdotes that you would like to share stuff that happens every day funny mm, stories <laughs> well there are a lot of funny stories but i'm not sure if the guys would mind if i say that uh, out Oof. loud yeah you have to keep them uh, as your friends right Good uh, yes <laughs> I'm in the same office with them every day, so I'm not <laughs> sure if I want to disclose some things. I, uh, I'm now in a beautiful offices of Iceberg in Amsterdam, but in a couple of days I'll be back in our offices, so right yeah. on their eyesight, so yeah. i got to be careful with that. <laughs> All right, well, we can keep it a bit more personal. So something about you. What kind of games, of course, next to Star Wars Gemini Warlords, do you like to play? What are your favorites? Personally, I like space games. I always love space games. I always... I'll, even today I play all space games. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm a freak about space. When I see <laughs> space in anything, it's it's my stuff. It's definitely something I want to try. And uh, lately, uh, in the last couple of um, months, I'm trying to get accustomed to some um, games made, uh, made uh, by uh, big development studios because uh, what we're trying to do is to reach to the level of uh, development they are making so i'm actually trying to see what what else we can do getting what, more ambitious what they did what we didn't do and <laughs> ah, actually i'm snooping yeah. around yeah well another question about uh Star and gemini warlords that we were actually very curious about is are you guys actually thinking about maybe taking this ip uh, beyond its current genre trying out new things uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, that's been on my mind uh, a lot. So there are actually a couple of ideas, uh, several different ideas. Uh, Warlords is uh, one example where we tried to introduce some new parts of the genre, but uh, we still weren't that bold to go completely uh, mm. different. So it's it's a blend of a new Small thing. Small steps. And, yes, but uh, we do have a couple of ideas. Uh, for example. Of, uh, we'd stay in the same, uh, in the same uh, general uh, setting, but uh, we're thinking how, how would it be to make a game that actually has a 
planet surfaces, uh, it it uh, it would use a, a specific part of a of a star in Gemini universe and then expand it on a micro level. So, for example, you could uh, you could be um, observing or and following a uh, destiny of a certain character in in its uh, how how he feels about the general global war and everything that's happening around him. So that's been on our mind quite a lot, and we are making some experiments actually. I can't actually say exactly what what about, Surprise. but, but uh, <laughs> we're not sure if any of that will get to the production as a full game in in any of the near time, near future, but uh, we are playing with some things, trying to experiment what else could be done. There is one specific idea that's closest to, let's say, possible realization. Some tests were actually made. Uh, parts of that uh, players will see in worlds as well. For example, uh, hangers, when they when we introduce hangers to the mm -hmm. Star Project and Warlords. So that's actually the interior of the station. And uh, you can park your ships inside. You're gonna see some uh, scenery inside. How it works uh, to refitting a ship and stuff like that. So that's actually a part of a of a one um, experiment of ours, where we we'll, we uh, we were thinking of making maybe uh, a game that's much uh, more dynamic and uh, direct, so to speak. So, for example, today you have in uh, Star Project Gemini 2 and Worlds as well, you have um, these abilities that you you launch fighters from bigger ships and mm -hmm. they uh, they also they're governed by the AI and they they're not directly controlled. So one idea was how would the entire that global war how that would look from the eyes of a single captain and the captain of something we don't have in Worlds that's a, a single uh, seater starship, so a fighter. And one idea was uh, to make a game that's actually uh, it's uh, completely crafted around one single captain that does not make any global decisions. He's not going to conquer the galaxy. He's not going to do anything global. He's quite an important part, but he has his own personal feeling, how he feels in that huge war that's uh, ravaging through Gemini for the third time in a row. So that was an idea. Of one game, but uh, it would uh, it would be a, a game that would much more resemble older games like X Wing, uh, X Wing mm -hmm. vs Tie Fighter, and uh, games like that. So it would be a little bit, a um, little bit, so to speak, arcade game. Uh, such genre is not such so popular today, but we were thinking how how that kind of a game would look in our universe, and if uh, entire story would be seen from the eyes of a single. Person. Well, definitely sound really interesting. And of course, you guys have an amazing community, so you can always try out things and ask for their opinions, and uh, they will be happy to definitely. help, right? Definitely. Yeah, I was wondering about, um, you guys get a lot of feedback on Warlords right now. How do you uh, pick the best ideas, and how do you uh, determine which idea you're going to use and which one you're not going to use? How does that work? Well, that works quite complicated. Um, <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, everything that's written on Steam, every idea that's uh, presented, is uh, uh, written down. In a, it's a general uh, list. It's a huge list. You you can yeah. get lost in that. It's, can it's imagine. Really a, huge list. <laughs> a lot of fans. Uh, yes, and th there are a lot of ideas. Some are plausible. Some are not. Some are easy to implement. Some are hard to implement. Some are impossible to implement. <laughs> there are a, lo a real lot of ideas. So the first step is we just divide them to uh, several categories. Uh, First category is uh, is uh, the first separation is if something is even possible to be introduced in the game. Uh, at that point, doesn't matter if it's hard or easy to implement. Is it possible at all, and does it um, does it fit in the current genre and uh, the game uh, the game how it's conceived? So that's one part. Uh, the the ideas that don't fit even there, they are on a separate list. So. Uh, all the ideas that we cannot use in the game or would uh, require, for example, six months uh, derailing the development of the game, it is uh, either modified or left on the separate list that's uh, for uh, bigger changes. Uh, the result of the second list that's not going to be adopted, the, the, the suggestions that will not be adopted, the result, for example, War Warlords is the one example of what happens with these suggestions. So we actually uh, created an entire separate game based on the suggestions that were too big to use in the Starpoint Gemini 2. I mean, all the suggestions 
uh, that we're gonna have in Warlords, <coughs> I mean the final version, not mm -hmm. current one. There are a lot of things missing in current version, but in the final version, a lot of things that uh, is gonna be implemented, it was physically possible to put it in the Starpoint Gemini 2, but it would definitely mean another one and a half or two years of development. Uh, yeah. So that that was too hard. But some some of the ideas were excellent. We didn't want to uh, didn't we didn't want to discard them because. No. We actually imagined how, how the game would look like, how the mechanics would work with such ideas, regardless that they are huge ideas and are almost impossible to add, but how it would look like if it would be added. Mm -hmm. And the general idea we got was it would look awesome. Mm -hmm. So let's <laughs> just make it in a separate game. So make it happen. That's how it that's happens. Awesome. And, and the, the smaller suggestions they're just, if they're plausible, if it's possible to implement, then they're, uh, they're divided between all the programmers, they make test runs, they make changes in their separate versions, and they see how that works. If it works well, if it can actually enhance the gameplay experience, then it remains and it's tweaked uh, additionally. Sometimes we, uh, we, uh, uh, we test a feature and then it actually, it has a potential, but it doesn't actually work as good as it should have. So we sometimes uh, bring uh, the results of the test back to the community and then they, um, they talk further about the idea. Okay, so you uh, hit the glitch there, so then you could do this, you could do that. So they actually refine uh, the feature themselves. And they do the work for you, kind yeah. of, also, for a bit. They, they, they do, <laughs> well, some of them actually do. There That's are a couple good. of people that actually even program. And, uh, Imagine how big your office us. had to be if you had to get them all there. Well, I, I'd love to get them all. They, oh. they're, they're cool people. I think it would be a, an awesome development team if we did all have them in one space. Awesome. Yeah, and so now there has been a big update, yeah. a summer update with a lovely new trailer. So what kind of uh, big, well, what were the biggest changes that you guys implemented in this update? Well, in this update, uh, we, we tr we're starting to bring finally uh, the additional content. Mm. So uh, in early updates, uh, in, in every update there were some new content, especially in the previous one, uh, but uh, we had a lot of bugs, a lot of problems. Mm. So we had to resolve that and a lot of time went to that. So as we are, uh, we are now uh, really uh, decreasing the number of problems, technical issues and stuff. So we're now finally, uh, we have more time to actually work on the content and prepare and polish the content that's gonna get in the game. So uh, what we've seen in the last content was uh, uh, some new, uh, new ships, uh, entire fleet lineups from different factions. Uh, and that's definitely not, it's, I think it's not even half of the old ships that are going to wow. be in the game yet. But uh, now we are, we are finally succeeding to implement entire fleets instead of uh, separate ships, uh, one ship by one ship at a time, so that's too slow. This is much better. Uh, a number of new stations was introduced, uh, perk system, uh, at least the first iteration is mm -hmm. inside now. And uh, one more thing that uh, we are now starting to implement is uh, things regarding uh, fleets, fleet movements, fleet uh, mm, uh, territory conquest, and uh, th that's actually the that part of the game is the the greatest difference between Star Prince Gemini Two and Warlords, and uh, it's uh, quite a sizable addition, and uh, it's um, it's interconnected uh, on uh, many levels. So we had. A, a lot of problems and many things regarding fleets were actually postponed a few times. Mm. So, but now they're finally starting to pour in, and uh, in the next month or month and a half, uh, the greatest accent on work will be on fleets and All fleet right. deployment system and strategy elements. So, I think that part will now grow the fastest. So far. Great, sounds really cool. Yeah. So, um, I guess we can dive into some gameplay, and uh, sure. he brought us a really good safe game, so we can dive in. Uh, very fast. Um, so yeah, we're going to show you the trailer first and then uh, our great producer Bart will start diving into the game uh, with Mario. So stay tuned and uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll try to uh, answer them. Play it cool.
Hello and welcome on behalf of myself as well. I'm Bart and I'm the producer here at Iceberg Interactive and I'm also known as uh, Surter, of course, on the chat and on the forums. And I'm going to take you through a bit of gameplay together with Mario here and show you some of the new things that came with this summer update. So I'm going to just uh, continue my game here and I'm going to leave the station. And here we can see already one of the great new... Uh, additions to this build and this is one of the new series of ships. Mario, can you tell us a bit about the new line of ships that has been implemented with this summer update? Well, uh, the, the new lineup of ships, it's, uh, they're all linked to uh, uh, one faction. So uh, the, the faction in question uh, uh, did not have any uh, proprietary ships of their own in the game so far. So right now we have an entire lineup of uh, ships. Uh, players will be able to see that uh, because the ships have a same design line, they 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 are uh, they have some distinct characteristics, and uh, all ships, all classes will have a uh, will have something in common. Uh, so it's going to be uh, easy to see to what faction they they belong. So. Uh, uh, the ships uh, introduced now are uh, there are several bigger ships right now, because um, as uh, ships are divided in Star Gemini 2, uh, not all factions have all ship classes. So uh, this faction uh, actually has uh, larger ship classes. So it's the start of uh, introduction of uh, larger uh, ship classes. Uh, so they actually look a little bit uh, different. They have more weapons. They are they maneuver differently. They have more power. So you see, it's it's quite packed with weapons. And uh, this is, uh, let's say, mid-size of what we're going to have uh, later. So uh, the biggest ships are still not in the game. And uh, since the size difference is now a uh, lot more different, uh, it's going to be quite, uh, quite a sight to see the passing, for example, of a smaller ship uh, right by the biggest one. And th that's quite a difference. Uh, with this update, uh, parts of that can already be visible. If you are driving a gunship, and you are uh, fighting a uh, destroyer class or battleship class that's uh, introduced in uh, in this update uh, of this specific faction, the difference is quite sizable. So it's a uh, it's a uh, quite a different thing to uh, fire or trying to engage in combat the big ship but it does have its weak points so it's not impossible but it's quite different okay so thank you for that brief uh, overview about all these different ship types so we got a whole bunch more coming and what i was really surprised with was th so this is a mid-range ship really whereas to me like a dreadnought class would be one of the biggest ones out there um not for star one gemini it goes uh, a lot further than that we can also see that in this particular save game, at least for those who are already playing and familiar with Starpoint Gemini Warlord, is that we have expanded our territory quite a bit at the cost of some of the opposing factions. Um, so we got full control of this asteroid belt and this debris field over here, which of course can in turn be mined, uh, be used to gather resources and other um, elements as well. And I think the uh, resources class is also the, the three we can see up here is also something that's been added with this particular update, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, in the in the previous uh, version of the game, uh, those were just placeholders. Uh, now the resource management is starting to appear. It's uh, not fully functional yet. Uh, it has to be coupled with uh, with the the ways you uh, you gather resources, the way you distribute them. And uh, uh, in the next update, uh, w the plan is to finally add uh, different uh, fleet types. So we're gonna have uh, aside fleets. We're gonna have uh, fleets that are not specifically combat fleets. Uh, there are trade fleets, there are uh, research fleets, there are mining fleets, there's going to be different uh, types of fleets, so uh, resource management is linked to them. And uh, once they are introduced, then the entire system will will have a, a lot more sense. Uh, but uh, we, are, we are now in the process of, it's a huge part of the game, and it uh, since we are on early access, we have a live game, uh, it's uh, not that easy to uh, close and prepare the version for release every uh, every five, several days so uh, our plan with this game is to uh, add things in batches in a little bit less frequent but uh, but uh, more extensive updates so in a in in the next uh, maybe one or two updates the entire fleet system should uh, be inside uh, properly working and everything and in the 
we also have uh, an advantage of um, having uh, people's uh, reactions uh, on uh, parts of the system. Uh, our our uh, one uh, fear that we had was that uh, this system is a very very huge one, and it it's actually uh, pivotal for the entire game. It's it's the the most important uh, new system in the game, and if we'd uh, just uh, not introduce it until we are completely finished, then uh, perhaps something would would not be uh, liked by players. They would want some changes and everything. And uh, the decision was that we're gonna, as soon as we're finishing that, we're gonna uh, introduce in every update parts of that mechanics. So if something is not uh, to the player's liking, we can. Uh, immediately uh, react and uh, improve things before we go too far and it's harder to go back and improve things. Right, so that also means that you are going to want to have feedback from the players with every new update and every step of the way, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we just encountered a bit of combat here. Um, the ship that Mario brought uh, for me is uh, pretty tough, so we're handling ourselves pretty well actually. Um, I'm using automated fire at the moment. And there is some loot to collect. And uh, let's see, do we have some? Uh, Are you looking for scavenger drones? Maybe? Yes, just mm -hmm. trying to see if we got some of those to uh, see what this derelict holds. So well, we have a question from the chat from Arthur Bass. Uh, he asks, "Can we build our star base as we want, or is it through predefined locations?" Uh, st uh, star base, uh, your main headquarters is uh, built uh, on a on a single sp uh, on a one point uh, where you actually command that station. So there are uh, there are pre-designed modules that you can build. You don't have to build them, and you have uh, uh, several types and several uh, ways to build uh, to expand that station. Uh, depending on what you build, uh, the new options will become available, and your gameplay will change depending on what you decide to build. Uh, as for the uh, other uh, buildings in the in the universe, uh, they will be on uh, preset locations, uh, but you will decide what you're going to build there. So uh, we call that points of interest. So when you uh, when you, for example, uh, invade some region, and uh, if you want to uh, impose your rule on that region, you, you need to destroy uh, every uh, every um, defensive post or uh, or a, a listening device or. Uh, scanning drone or, or uh, any kind of infrastructure uh, governed by the opposite faction that controlled that previously. Once you destroy that, that area uh, will belong to you. But then you can start building it. You don't have to. But uh, if you don't build anything there, that region will be open and exposed to any attack. So everybody can claim it. Everybody can claim After it right. and everybody will, will, will be able to attack it anyways, but if you build your infrastructure it will be able to sustain itself better or you can uh, use these uh, buildings to increase your uh, your resource uh, pool from that region. Right. And, and uh, would it be having an expansion limit? Uh, on uh, headquarters or? Yeah, like how big can you make? Can you make it as big as you want? Uh, no, no. They're, they're, no. They're, <laughs> There, there is a limit, but uh, but uh, the station, the the main part of the station, when you get uh, early in the beginning of the game, the main part of the station is, it's about three or four times smaller than than the or size you can make it if you add all the hangars, research base, yeah. and everything, and you need uh, many millions of credits for all that. Right, so, so it's going to take time some there. time. Okay, yeah. great. One thing introduced in this update, uh, not sure if you're gonna be uh, attacked by that, but uh, enemies will now start uh, using their equipment, skills and uh, special items. So uh, in previous updates, if you were cloaked or you, uh, or you were going in uh, sublight speed, you were quite safe against enemy attacks. Uh, right now, uh, chunks of uh, enemy AI is starting to get online, so it's not going to be that easy. If you are packed against enemies, if you are attacked, if you decide to run away, they can use weapons to disrupt your sublight or to disperse your cloak or to to attack you even if you think you're safe. And that's that's right now only the beginning, but that's how it's going to work so far. So before we make a final balancing, uh, the new features will 
provisionally make the game a bit harder. Except for you, you have a safe game with a uh, ship. Basically, you have a cheat, but uh, you don't have to worry about that. So I have another question from Kira. He is asking, can we use fleet formations other than the V1? Uh, at this point, uh, no, but there, there will be, uh, I think, uh, eight, six or eight different formations. Uh, they will be added, and uh, by the time that uh, all kinds of fleets you can, you can manage and command, by the time they're all introduced, the fleet formations will have to be also in place and uh, fully functional. Right. It's in testing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We have um, several kind of fleets, uh, kind of formations that uh, actually they work very well, but when they come to a certain, you issue a specific command to them, they get all crazy and start flying all around <laughs> and do crazy things. So we're not gonna uh, not uh, yet. release that until not they yet ready yet, no. <laughs> in check. So I have another question from Anubix32. He's asking, are there any plans to make the context menu a pop-up, like how it worked in Starpoint Gemini 2, or will it continue to pause the game as it currently does or did? Uh, that, that question has been brought up uh, a lot of times and uh, the original idea was to uh, actually replace the context menu uh, mechanics how it worked in SPG2 with this one. Right. But uh, actually we had uh, I think a, f a few hundred uh, people asking ah. that same question. So uh, just in the meeting two days ago in the office we actually think we'll have to do something about that. So yeah. uh, one idea, one idea is to uh, actually allow to have both ways. So to um, reintroduce the old mechanics and then make it a checkbox in options, so you can right. choose whether you want uh, the new system or the old system. Because some players actually said this one is better, some said that one is better, uh, and. Yeah. If, if it's going to be possible, and I think it will be, we're just going to do both and let people Give them the decide. choice. That's yeah, really so. nice. That's, that's great. So, uh, another one from Foxline01 asks, any plans on integrating co-op? Uh, with Warlords, unfortunately, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. It bothers us as well. We really want that co-op. <laughs> That's the, that's the only part of multiplayer experience that actually we want to make, yeah. regardless of what everybody else thinks. We think <laughs> it would it would work excellent with the game, but uh, I just don't think it's going to be it's, plausible uh, ah. yet, yet. So it's going on the list. It's on the list. It's, <laughs> that, that thing is on the list for a long time, and that's why it bothers me. Great. So, Bart, what are you currently doing? So actually, we just managed to uh, capture a new sector uh, right through our uh, north, I suppose, if you can use that in space, um, at least from the map perspective. And um, so, yeah, we, we used our fleet to assist us in there. So that's one of the things that's new in the game. Actually, the uh, fleet mechanics are they're, they're being um, developed and, and continuously evaluated, as, as uh, Mario was talking about. So I used those to assist me. And of course, like Mario said, I got a pretty big heavy ship here that... Um, usually at this point in game the player wouldn't have but again it's like to, to show off some of the new features some of the new stuff we got for us so after that successful um, sortie I'm just gonna return back to base uh, see if we can take on some missions perhaps see if we can sell some of the loot we gathered and uh, just generally see what what else we can do to uh, wreak some havoc in this um, universe uh, the other new thing that might be interesting to, to point out here is the um, update to the perk system. Of course, there was something, uh, the skill system was already in here, but to this uh, tap over here, this is a new one. Uh, Mario, could you perhaps tell us a bit about what the perks are and, and how they work? Uh, yes, uh, so the, the perks existed in previous game as well, but the uh, perk system is uh, changed completely. That's one of the things that does not have uh, many similarities with the old system. So, uh, in Warlords, uh, a lot of things that uh, were uh, accomplished by using perks in the previous game uh, are now uh, accomplished by using uh, equipment items and, uh, and actually uh, part of the uh, general skill system. So, a uh, perk system in that respect would be actually an extra. It would, it would uh, not be as usable as it could be. So, the perk system is changed. Right now, the new perk system introduced will... Uh, will uh, actually add uh, specific bonuses 
uh, to uh, using a certain ship class, certain ship type, a certain uh, type of weapon, uh, or uh, or a certain skill. Uh, so the perks will enhance what you decide. So, uh, but of course, you cannot revert that, and you'll have to be mindful of what actually you plan to use in the game. Uh, if you if you put uh, place uh, pro points on uh, things that you're not going to be using in the game, it's as well as you don't have perks at all. So that part players will have to uh, be mindful right now what, what they're going to do, what they plan to use in the future, uh, not when you select the perk, but what what your type of combat and the pre preferable uh, ship type will be later in the game. That's the greatest difference. And as for the way perks are gained, that part uh, is the only thing uh, still remaining from the second game. That part didn't change. As you level up, you gain you gain uh, experience and uh, and levels. Uh, you um, boost your skills, and each five levels you get a pro point. So that that part did not change. Uh, it depends on uh, on the experience level and on uh, rank that you currently have. And the ranks are also uh, linked with the ship you can command. So that's prerequisite for owning a ship. So would you say that then choosing your perks is a lot more uh, a lot more important decision, a lot bigger decision than it was in Starpoint Gemini 2? Uh, yes, yes, uh, definitely, because they, they have more uh, direct influence on combat. So uh, they are more than just a single modifier. Uh, right now, uh, uh, for example, if you if your perk is enhancing your uh, the way you use your uh, a certain ship class, you want to be very proficient and be a perfect at commanding a certain ship class. Uh, ship consists of many systems, and you can uh, you can uh, upgrade your ship and modify your ship in many ways. So the perk you have for that class will actually uh, it will influence all of the things that you've done. A combined ship so the uh, overall effect will be much greater so but but you as i said you you have to choose what you use them for because if you if you uh, if you uh, if your perk allows you to be very proficient and very dangerous and very very uh, very uh, powerful with a battleship class and then you use gunship class your perks are as well as nothing they are they just as, as they don't exist so that's a wasted lot of levels, and you don't get uh, so many perks as skill levels, so it's it would be a shame to waste them. So in the meantime, there have been a couple of questions out there in the chat. Uh, we just saw uh, us taking one of these uh, border sectors. Is it also po possible to raid deep inside enemy territory and, and capture some of those sectors in there? Uh, it's possible to uh, raid them, attack them, but you, uh, for now, in current system, you cannot uh, take control of the territory that's not adjacent to you, to uh, at least some of your borders. Uh, it's a, it's a created because um, we wanted to uh, to make possible for players, uh, if you want to destroy some faction, that you cannot actually jump across map and then just raid the the parts of the of their territory. That's a uh, so say lucrative that's uh that would pay off to you uh in reality they would defend and they would try to stop you so you can actually just jump across uh, it's not so easy now but uh, later in the game when all the travel systems are introduced it would actually be possible so uh, this is one of the ways we wanted to um, to use to prevent that uh, you can jump into any area or covertly get there uh, using cloaking device and everything you can uh, lay ways there and destroy that region destroy infrastructure and defensive positions of that region yeah that has an impact because that region is then weaker so your enemy that you are planning to invade their territory is actually getting less resources it's getting weaker and you are actually you are succeeding in making him uh, weaker before you attack it but you cannot annex that region directly if you're not uh, at least partly connected to it. And um, in um, in relation to actually traveling across the map, so you mentioned there will be different ways to, to move about the map other than the one we're seeing here, which is just uh, regular flying. So what kind of plans do you have for that? Uh, well, there will be uh, pretty much all systems existed in the previous game, plus some new ones. Uh, for example, right now you're going to have a Rift Drive. Uh, that's... Uh, it kind of looks like a Star Trek 
or a Star Wars hyper system, something like that. So even the effect looks uh, something like that, but uh, uh, not quite in the same way. You will also have equipment that will be able to teleport you uh, instantly on uh, different parts of the map. Uh, that's item, so it's going to be usable. Uh, the the system itself will work similar to the previous game. As uh, as uh, farther as you want to go, uh, the more items you have to use. The only trick in this game will be that the universe is nine times bigger in this game than in previous one. So if you uh, if you want to use items, uh, equipments to uh, jump around and uh, effectively avoiding every possible confrontation, every problem along the way. Uh, you'll have to spend a fortune you, you, uh, buying these uh, equipments, uh, items. Now, in in previous game, many people actually used it as a, as a leverage. They 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 basically succeeded to avoid. Once they um, they revealed the entire map, if they had enough equipments, they could just jump around every possible problem and uh, make themselves uh, very wealthy and. Uh, just go from easy mission to easy mission. So this time it will be uh, harder to do because of the size of the universe. So I have another question from the chat. Uh, Dark Mecha 83 is asking, will the player-owned station have some lights and whatnot? It's a minor thing, but it always looks cool. I have some. That's what he said. Maybe means if there will be cool uh, lights on it or like yes a, yes definitely some a light. Uh, customization uh the station must look very very friendly and very very how to say um very uh, domestic ah. definitely uh the difference will also be when you when you acquire mm -hmm. some station or or uh, object or anything in space once it's uh not used or it's disabled or something it will look bad it will be mm. built but it will look bad and once you start to mm, uh, to uh, fix it or uh, give it more uh, more add-ons or uh, some features characteristics it will also it will visually uh, be bigger you have more modules modules will do something uh, for example um, on a mining part of the station or um, mining installation separate mining installation once it's up and running it actually works it will work so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna have containers running around fumes steams coming all around drills doing their stuff in the asteroid cool. field so we'll try to make it more dynamic uh, yeah. it, it was a uh, in previous game that was a, a matter of uh, some worry it was not done prof enough it, it was <laughs> yeah it was too stationary too many objects right. were stationary so we'll change that this time all right. Well, then I have another question <laughs> from Astro Zombie. He asks, "Will there be small maneuverable ships like the Corsair in Starpoint Gemini 2?" Yes. Yes. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> short and simple. Yes. Yes. Uh, the only difference will be they will be more maneuverable and more faster because there are much bigger ships now, and we had to make a, also a mechanical difference between them. So, uh, smallest gunships will actually now they will their behavior will resemble even more to fighters. They, they will still not be fighters, but they will resemble even more to the right. standard fighter because they have the big ships need to be much lower. And right. Uh, Tal Maru is there. That's a good friend. Oh, I, hello. Uh, hello, I Tal Maru. <laughs> it's always nice to hear from you. So we have another uh, question. Is there a penalty on death other than losing cargo? Uh, at this point, no. Uh, we have a couple of ideas uh, how to uh, spice up on that, uh, but we we have a a number of very different ideas here, so it's it's hard to make a choice. Some people actually want to make a permadeath hardcore stuff. <laughs> uh, other people want to have some different uh, approach. And uh, the uh, the end game, the the way the game uh, functions once you're killed. It's not that easy to make it uh, in a different uh, way, so it's not easy to allow all options. So we will have to make a choice there, yeah. and all twelve players just scream loud so we can we can see what you want the most. <laughs> so that part will be adopted. And there we see uh, summer sale has officially begun, guys, and. Uh, Warlords is 25% off, so if you're still thinking about getting it, this is probably a good moment to do so. 
Exactly. <laughs> Please do not do not hide your wallets. So Mario, when do you think um, there will be a next update? Next update will be, uh, I think the regular schedule is uh, uh, July fifteenth. Right. Mid July is That's the next. That's pretty one. soon already. Yes. Exciting. It has to be. <laughs> So is there anything in game that we haven't shown the people yet from the new update? Or did we uh, already see a lot of it? What do you think? Uh, I think the most is most is shown right now. Right. Uh, one thing in the next update, I, I hope it's going to be in the next update already. Uh, the, some people, some players notice that the planets Planes are much larger in size now, and when you once you get closer to them, they're more uh, more blurred. So, right. uh, but uh, not to worry. Planets are placeholders, so don't worry about ah. that. Uh, it's it's only a stretched model of a uh, old planet. It's the same texture, uh, but the size is different. And uh, the only difference right now with the planets is uh, it has a different shading of the light depending on how it works. So you have a you have a normal uh, normal appearance to the planet once you're on dark side and light side and it works better but the planet texture and the the visible uh, side of the planet it's not final it's, not final it's, yet, it's right. in production i hope uh, in the next one or two updates we will be replacing all planets so it's getting even more prettier than it already is yeah it has to be this <laughs> well people here are talking about tractor beams Tomaru, if we have shown off the new tractor beams have we I'm not uh, sure. I haven't seen that. Ah. No, I think we did not. No, not yet. Uh, we might get to in uh, in our coming battle. Actually, this will allow me to show one of the other ways of travel other than regular ones. I just bought one of the uh, equipments for that, which is the T drive, which will actually instantly uh, transport us to anywhere within this circle. So you can't get like overly far. I think you can get further if you got more if you're willing to spend more T drives on it. Um, but it's a good way to, to show off just how it works. So this is equipment based, so you can use this on any ship, of course, as long as you're willing to uh, to pay for the drive itself. So let's just take a, a quick hop here uh, just to see how it works. So it's quite simple. It is a teleportation drive, so we start at one place and we show up at the other, and that saves us a good bit of time. It can also really get us out of a tough situation if you really want to get out somewhere very quickly. And this is just one of the many uh, ways in which will, you will be able to actually go across the universe and uh, explore all there is to see. Um, is it actually possible, Mario, to uh, tr teleport into unknown space? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, this device has to be used uh, on the space that's uh, been revealed already. Uh, the the other way, the the uh, rift system, uh, that part can be used to travel in the area you did not. Uh, revealed previously, but that uh, that device is not. I would say it's not. A, it's not a 100% uh, safe device. So with this device, you hop on the point where you want to go. If you have enough charges, you just appear there. So uh, the uh, rift way, you'll have to almost manually go there. So uh, the effect will be. You'll see a very uh, fast um, passage of space and uh, all the objects around you. So it's going to be a very, very fast travel way, but uh, in that uh, you can be interrupted, you can be attacked, you can be stopped while traveling with that. So it's, it's basically just a, it's a different variation of this one. It will be cheaper, it will be easier to use, but uh, it's going to be less safe. So we wanted to make a balance uh, between, uh, between basically free jumping all around the system with... Uh, uh, with uh, no risks and uh, actually taking some risks so this will be much easier but uh, it will include some risk something similar to the previously what we had the uh, room holes and the uh, t-gates the uh, t-gates and the room holes basically they um, they fast traveled you on pretty much the same way except the risks involved were different t-gate was safe you just paid what you wanted and uh, after you paid the fee you were transported to the exit point of the uh, t-gate system where you wanted to go with the wormhole, it's free. You can just enter inside and go to the exit system. But it's possible it's gonna rip you apart, or kill half of your crew, or do something, some Ouch. other nasty thing. But <laughs> that's it, it's great for a fast runaway, but it's it's Small not without downsides. risks. Small downsides. <laughs> Nothing is for free. Remember no. that. 
Uh, one one thing also I, I forgot to mention one tiny detail that's been added right now uh, the new scanning system of the enemy ships so once you approach uh, uh, enemy installation or friendly installation something that's guarded or planets or whatever uh, right now you're gonna have uh, working patrols going uh, around these objects it's also only the beginning of the system um, but they will uh, intercept you uh, request uh, request uh, permissions to scan you you can refuse you can get in problems with them if they scan you and they find something not very legal then you're mm -hmm. also gonna have problems or uh, but uh, it, it was quite similar in the previous game right now what you have with the uh, with the uh, the system of um, diplomatic system where you can uh, dialogue system you can talk to the people intercepting you or uh, the people you meet in space right now you can also try to get away from the situation without combat so it's possible not very easy depending on who actually uh, inter intercepted you but it's possible so these parts are also only coming uh, together right now but uh, with every ship with everything that happened you will be able to have communication and the uh, uh, selection of answers and you can try to talk your way out of the problem mm. but <laughs> it will depend on how persuasive you are so we're slowly getting to the last parts of this stream, so if you have some questions for Mario, this is the moment to ask them in the chat. We're taking this man out to dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm looking city. forward to that. I have full confidence in you. <laughs> You're very... You'll select something good. I'm sure we will. I've never been to Amsterdam so far, so... What you yeah. show me is what I'm gonna take with me <laughs> about this city. Well, we're going to do our best. Tomorrow is asking steak, lobster. <laughs> uh, that's, think, a, that's, uh, that's a choice question, multiple <laughs> choice or? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there are more answers, maybe not. I heard this story that when you were in San Francisco, you wanted to eat steak every day. That was your objective. That was my objective. <laughs> and I failed miserably. Oh. I did not succeed. These steaks are too big. They are. They're very so. big. Oh, here we have a question from Lurkster. How well integrated is controller support? And also, can someone tell me what the difference is between this and Starpoint Gemini? Um, well, I think the last question is actually quite obvious. <laughs> But the first one, how well integrated is controller support? Uh, okay, so uh, controller support uh, right now it's integrated uh, not not very excellent. It's it's not the best, definitely. Uh, but uh, controller support for warlords will definitely be much 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 better than in the Star Trek Gemini 2. Uh, reason is uh, this game is developed uh, in two versions uh, from the start, so uh, the entire uh, all hot changes and everything that was done was done uh, uh, with uh, controllers in mind so we, we don't want to make uh, partial support or uh, full support only some controllers or any kind of that uh, solution uh, the Xbox controller is the first one and the other controllers will get uh, full support and the HUD uh, will be redesigned to uh, meet the controller so uh, Support should be perfect once it's created. It's not ready right now, uh, definitely. I'm not gonna lie about that, but uh, it should be uh, spot on this time without any uh, any problems. And regarding the uh, difference between Starpoint, Gemini, and uh, this game, uh, the main difference is uh, in uh, well, obviously the storyline is completely new. It's 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 not uh, the same as us. It's uh, Warlords actually continue the uh, storyline from Star Point Gemini 2. Uh, the storyline in this current alpha version is only partially with a very small part uh, available right now. We're going to be adding that uh, as the updates go on. But the storyline is completely different. Uh, and uh, the actually the genre is uh, somewhat changed. So uh, most of the things you could do in Star Point Gemini 2 will be available here. But the entire strategic part and the uh, global decisions, uh, territory conquest, building your uh, your uh, stations, uh, acquiring territory, controlling your faction, diplomatic screens, uh, dialogue menus, uh, that entire uh, global part did not exist in Star Trek Gemini 2, and it will exist here, and it will be uh, much further upgraded than it's currently right now. 
So, we have gotten to our last question. Thank you, Obscured, for the compliment. That's really nice. <laughs> no, the question is, uh, he says, I haven't played Starboard Gemini 2. Is there a shipbuilding feature? I saw there is a Steam Workshop page, but Steam is overloaded at the moment, so I can't see. Oh. Uh, wor uh, workshop is implemented in Starboard Gemini 2. It's possible to mod the game. We have uh, quite a number of uh, nice mods already. Um, mm, as for, uh, I'm not sure if I got the question correctly. If you mean a ship building inside the game, so that you build your own ships, or yeah, I think probably that's what he means. Uh, that part, no. You you can customize your ship, but you cannot build your ship. Right. It's not possible to create your own ship. You can change parts of it, uh, but you can build your own. Just like customizations and stuff like uh, yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that kind of concludes the live stream of today. Time sticking, and uh, I guess you guys also want to dive into that Steam summer sale. So um, I want to thank you all for joining us today. It was kind of spontaneous for us all, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so Mario, do you have some last words for the community? Uh, <laughs> uh, ju just stay as cool as you were so far. You were awesome, and just spam us with all your emails and feedback. We can take it. All right, you hear it, guys. So enjoy your day and uh, we will see you next time. Good day. Bye. Cheers, Bye. everyone.